and welcome to Parenting to Win. I'm your host, Clarinda McGrady. If you're new to this site, ParentingToWin.com is your one-stop shop for all your parenting needs. Here, you'll find helpful tips and expert advice for all parents, no matter if you have kids in diapers or kids in dorms. be speaking with Senior Vice President of the MBA's Orlando Magic, one of America's top motivational speakers, leadership author extraordinaire, parenting authority, and for today's show, because of his 19 kids, he'll be our parenting expert. Let's <laughs> welcome Mr. Pat Williams. I want to speak a little bit about leadership. Good, I know good. that you are heavy in the leadership world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And how does that play a role in our home? How do we, how are we the leaders and, and show that to our children to raise up strong and yes. competent and respectful and responsible leaders? I wrote a book a few years ago called Coaching Your Kids to Be Leaders. Yes. It was an interesting project. And uh, here's what I came away with. We, we need to start teaching leadership principles mm. to our children at a very, very young age. Yes. Because we're trying to get them to be, to be leaders. Right. Uh, in the future, leaders in their home mm -hmm. as they become parents, leaders with their children, leaders in their community or their business or their churches. You know, we're trying to get them ready for a life of leadership. And I think it starts at home. Right. And I think we start teaching and we start giving young children opportunities to lead yes. at home in, right. in situations that we design right. where, and this is important, Clarinda, where they can have some early success. Right. Uh, and, early, and early failures, too, I would imagine. Yeah, you know, they, they're going to have some, yeah. but, but, but initially, right. to get them really confident, confident and comfortable, they've yes. got to have some early successes. Absolutely. Teachers in the classroom can do this. Uh, coaches in youth sports, mm -hmm. you know, Little League Baseball, for example, you know, you, you, you give each kid a chance uh, right. to be a leader in a certain situation. Maybe he puts the lineup together that day, or maybe he goes up to home plate yes. and exchanges the lineup cards right. with the umpire. And, Absolutely. you know, just those little opportunities where he can feel good she, about himself. Feel good about themselves yes. and said, you know, I enjoyed that. I had some leadership opportunities. Uh, you know, through high school, but really at Wake Forest, where mm -hmm. I was in, in college, uh, some leadership opportunities, and they, they worked out, and I felt, golly, I felt good about mm. myself. And as I look back, that really triggered what I've been right. doing professionally for the last five decades. Absolutely. Because I, I had those opportunities where I thought, you know what, I can do this. Yeah. And it feels good to do this, and I, I want more of this. I mean, that's basically what happened in my career. Right. So, uh, and then I write and I speak about the seven sides of leadership, mm -hmm. Clarinda, and people ask me all the time, what's a leader to look like? I yes. mean, at the end of the day, and what, so let me just share this with you in a poem. Okay. Can we do poetry on your show? We can do poetry. Seven things one must do to be a leader right and true. Have vision that is strong and clear, Communicate so they can hear. Have people skills based in love and character that's far above. The competence to solve and teach and boldness that has fearless reach. A serving heart that mm. stands close by to help, assist, and edify. So I think that, wow. to me, that's leadership <laughs> in, in, a, in a brief little poem. Awesome. And in my speaking and my writing, you know, I expand on that. But I, as I have studied leadership and read about great leaders yes. and, and really gotten a handle on this, I, I've noticed that those are the seven qualities that, that always are there. Right. They're, they're not optional. They all have to be there, those seven qualities. So, so we need to take, from parents, we need to take those seven qualities and just invest and incorporate and right. saturate our home with those that's right with those qualities and, we're, and we talk about them and we, we give our kids opportunities vision you got a community vision by the way Clarinda you've got to be able to see out over the horizon Absolutely. a visionary leader sees the future before it gets here mm -hmm. great leaders have a vision for the country or a vision mm -hmm. for their company or a vision for the sports team in, in case of parenting you've got a vision for your children yes. what they can become Absolutely. kids don't see it 
Right. But but you spot what they're good at and what their interests are and what their and you personality is. You train them up like. in that area. That's right. And you yeah. you you are you're pushing them into that because you have a vision. Yes. You've got to be able to communicate your vision yes. in any field. You got to be able to talk about it. And I think that's good too because so many parents, if you have multiple kids, you know we can't parent each child the same. It's not a cookie cutter. That's right. So we have to train them up with their individual temperament, personality, and their own yes. their own gifts and talents. We've got twin grandsons. They're young. They're little. But but uh, already out of the same womb, you know, yes. they are <laughs> different personalities. Absolutely. And different makeup and different sizes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's quite interesting. So you're right. They're, awesome. they're all different. So we need to be, be the world's leading authority on our children. Mm -hmm. Got to study them and watch them like a hawk Absolutely. and really, really understand. No, they're natural bent. That's right. I think that's right. What would you say for the parent who feels like that their child is just not a natural born leader? I've heard, I've talked to parents before, and they go, "Oh, well, Johnny's just not a leader, or he just doesn't have it." You know, I like to think that we are our leaders, just on different capabilities. We all have assignments that may be different from the other person. So, is it true that we're all leaders, or? Or some just not leaders. I think we are all leaders, Clarinda. I'm often asked, "Are leaders born or made?" Yeah. And I and my answer is both. Mm. I mean, they're born, right? Of obviously, <laughs> and then they're developed. Exactly. I, th I think leadership can be learned. You know, maybe in the history of the world, there have been a handful of natural born leaders, yes. but not many. Mm -hmm. So I think leadership is a learned art. It can be taught. Uh, it can be practiced. We all can improve. Mm -hmm. So here's what I would say to parents, you know, we tend to think that the leader is the brassy kid, yeah. you know, who's constantly talking, has this incredible outgoing personality, yes. always organizes the games and organizes yes. the children and, you know, uh, we tend to say, boy, what he's a, a great leader. leader. What a leader. Mm -hmm. But don't neglect the quiet ones. Yes. You don't have to be you know, that brassy type to be a great leader. There are right. many leaders who have an understated personality, yes. but yet they end up doing a very effective job of leadership. Absolutely. So leadership come in all sorts of sizes, right. different shapes, different different voices, you know, right. different colors. Absolutely. You know, they, they, they all come in, in different packages. So our job as parents is to put every kid in a position uh, to, to learn how to be a leader. Right. And I think you talk about it. You know, now in my day, uh, we didn't talk about, my parents didn't talk about leadership. Yes. Now, they modeled it. Right. I mean, they were leaders in the state of Delaware. It was just, as I look back, mm -hmm. remarkable. Mm -hmm. And I saw them in action, but they didn't talk about it. And there were no books in those days right. about coaching your kids to be leaders. Exactly. So there are lots of resources there. But I think when parents and teachers and coaches mm -hmm. have, have a swing in their mindset that I am here not as a coach, not as a teacher, not as a parent, but I am here in the leadership development role. Yes. That's my role. Yes. I think you parent differently. I think you coach and teach differently. Absolutely. When you think I am in this position to get this classroom of students yes. and this little league baseball team and these four children of mine, yes. you know, to be leaders uh, in, in this society, you mm -hmm. know, as they become adults. And, and in many cases, even before. Absolutely. You know, I've seen some wonderful young leaders, wonderful teenage leaders. Yes. Boy, it just amazes me. There's some really sharp kids out there. Well, in contrast to the wonderful ones that you've seen, you, you've mentioned your, your seven uh, traits for great leadership. What about for the parent who's dealing with that teenager or that college student who just feels like, okay, you know, there's just no hope in regards to leadership. It's just they feel like they want to throw their hands up. Um, what can they do at that point where they're not the small child where you can sort of mold necessarily, mm -hmm, but they're mm -hmm. a little older, uh, a little bit more set in their ways. What can that parent do? I would say again, Clarinda, don't give up. It's yeah. so easy to just to kind of pack it in and say this kid is hopeless or, yeah. you know, it's, it's never going to work. Some kids come around later. Yes. Here's an example. We adopted a young girl from Brazil years back. She was 11 years old, formed in her habits. and. Uh, and through her teen years, it was a nightmare, an absolute nightmare. We just didn't feel we had a chance. Mm -hmm. And then as she got into her early 20s, it got worse. And uh, we just felt that's it. Yeah. Then at one point, she came to us and she said, I've been out here long enough to know that it isn't working my way. Mm. And I want to do it your way. <laughs> and I want to go to college. Mm. And will you help me? Oh, wow. And that was the first statement. And will you help me with a place to live? Now, when the kids were 18, they had to leave. But yes. in this case, our guest house 
we said, okay, if you're, if you're gonna do this and you're serious about it, you know, you can stay out there. And so she finished junior college and then said, I wanna go on to the university. So she ended up going to the University of Central Florida. Mm -hmm. And we just got word on May 3rd of this spring, which is my birthday, by the way, yeah. at nine o'clock in the morning, you know, she will graduate from the University of wow. Central Florida. In the meantime, she has been working full time you know, in a leadership position with her mm. company, uh, she and her, her fiance have also set a wedding date mm. in, no, in November of this year. It's a beautiful story. Awesome. Uh, we're really proud of that story. A young lady in her 20s mm -hmm. who suddenly saw the light. Mm. So I guess my point is, you know, at certain ages, some of these recalcitrant kids, mm. you know, are going to wake up. They're going to wake back up. On track. And, and the thing that brings them back in many cases is what I call. A, a, a dose of remedial reality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they get into that real world exactly. and they find out, boy, this is hard. Yes. And, and I'm not making it. And mom and dad's way sounds a whole lot better yeah. today Absolutely. than it did 10 years ago. Absolutely. And you know, maybe they were right. Yeah. Just maybe they were right. Yeah. And so, so hang in there, parents, hang in there. Ha most of parenting I found is just hanging in there. Yeah. You know, don't you, you? You can't quit on this. I mean, you're a parent for life. Yes, absolutely. Can't quit. You mentioned a few times how at 18 you're adamant you're out of here, whether you're going to college, mm -hmm. the military, or wherever. Why is that so important? Because obviously there's plenty of kids that are still lingering around at home beyond 18, in mm -hmm. 20s, and even 30s. Why is that 18 mark so important? Well, here, here's let me just share this little story with you. We have a, a, a Christian counselor friend in uh, Orlando. Uh, who has said to me on a number of occasions, he said, the number one issue in my counseling practice, adult children who won't leave home. <laughs> he said, it's my number one issue. Um, yeah. And, and uh, you know, this 28-year-old kid is just hanging, and hanging at home. He said, there are 13 million adult children who haven't left home yet. Wow. And he said, most of them are males. Really? And so it's not a bad life. Yes. You know, you hang around the house and mom and dad continue to pay the bills and you have access to their refrigerator and, you know, mm -hmm. all your electrical bills are paid and you mm -hmm. can hang out and yeah. watch the big screen TV and play video games and hang with your friends yes. and blah, blah, not a bad life. Yeah. Not a bad life. Right. And then as it continues on, the parents have a problem. Now what do we do? This kid is 25. How do we get him out of here? <laughs> Yeah. How do we get him? And he hasn't he hasn't gotten a job yet, or he's yeah. got part time jobs. He's working at the restaurant and mm -hmm. stays out all night, and he's under our roof. And we mm -hmm. whew, that's a nightmare, yes. Clarinda, for a parent. I left I left home at eighteen, went to college, came back only for Christmas and a few days at Thanksgiving, and that was it. Yeah. I mean that's that's the way the world works. Absolutely. At eighteen, you're leaving. Yeah. Yeah. That's and 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 but you do not spring this on your kid. You know, halfway through his senior year of high school. Yes, it's already established. Your children from the time they're three or four years old, I mean, right on through yeah. at 18, you're leaving. Right. And it's not a punishment. Right. You're going to college. And if you don't want to go to college, and we'll get you through college. Right. And if you don't want to do college, the military's waiting. Right. Two of my kids went right into the Marine Corps. Right. If you don't, if you don't want to go to college, military's waiting. Right. And if that just doesn't work, well, then you go get a job. Right. At Walmart or absolutely, you know, at Olive Garden, or, right. you know, you get a job like everybody else, and right. you start paying your own bills, <laughs> you know, but you're not hanging here, right? You know, I mean, who, wh what parent in the world would want a 25-year-old kid and a 23-year-old and a 21-year-old? I mean, just living at home and what a nightmare! And the kid's not really going anywhere that way, and yeah. so don't. So it's from the beginning. Absolutely. You're training up this kid that he's leaving. Absolutely. You know, to go out and start his own life. Yeah. Like you and I did. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, we set the boundaries early on. But they need to know. So, Pat, what about for the parents uh, that don't want to be the bad guy? They're afraid to sort of set rules and boundaries because they don't want to be the bad guy. Is it okay for us to be the bad guy? Yeah, absolutely. It, 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 this is the whole issue of discipline. Right. And, uh, you know, I, w I would remind parents constantly that this is your house, mm -hmm. you set the rules, right. and the kids will play by the rules. Mm -hmm. And at 18, they're leaving, and your house remains your house. Right. You know, the kids are just short time visitors. Absolutely. And, and so you've got to set rules, you've got to set boundaries. Now, here's an interesting 
little story. Years back, um, we had dinner with Dr. Bill Bright. He is the founder, was the founder of Campus Crusade for Christ, maybe the most godly man I've ever met. Mm. And so he was interested and asked about the children. And we immediately began to tell him about all the discipline we had. The yeah. shoes were lined up here and the laundry had numbers on it. And, you know, we went through the whole thing. And then in his godly wisdom, he said, don't forget the love. Mm. <laughs> That's what yeah. he said. Yeah. Don't forget the love. Yeah. In other words, if you get that discipline balanced too strongly that way yes. and the love is minimal, yes. boy, that, that's not good. Absolutely. So you've got to get the love and the discipline balanced equally. Absolutely. Kids need to know they're loved, unconditionally loved. But they also need to know that there is discipline in this home. Absolutely. And if you break the discipline, if you cross the line, yes. you know, you're going to pay a price. A consequence. You know, you're going to be grounded for a week or you're going to be uh, not be able to see your friends for mm -hmm. two weeks, depending on the issue. I mean, they're going to be there's there's you're going to be uh, quiet time. You're going to be set alone in your room alone mm -hmm. or whatever the deal is. You right. you establish that. Right. Kids have to know that. Right. And if they're going to if they're going to test you and, and they will. Right. To, to cross your rules and your discipline, you know, they're going to pay a price. I have to ask you this, considering I, you're a parenting expert and so many of the parenting gurus out there are opponents of uh, spanking. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about spanking? Oh, we did. We yeah. did. I had two belts in my closet. <laughs> okay. One was called Black Bertha <laughs> and I had another one called Brown Bertha. I had a black and a brown Bertha. And a black and brown Bertha. <laughs> And uh, boy, I could snap those things. You could take those belts and <laughs> pop them. And, yeah. uh, and oftentimes that pop would do the job. Yes. But my kids to this day, every single one of them, you know, yes. remembers black and brown Bertha. And I was chuckling the other day, one of our sons, one of the Filipino sons, who's now, what, mid thirties, he and his wife have two boys. And the oldest one, I guess, is six. And mm -hmm. he's, he's a little handful. Mm -hmm. And guess what they have in their home? A black and brown Bertha. Yes, <laughs> and, and little Austin, who's six, knows all about black okay. and brown Bertha. Okay. Meaning my son, Peter, you know, picked up on that and he Absolutely. still remembers it to this day. And, and I, would, I would kid around, you know, if the kids were stepping out of line, I would say, boy, Black Bertha, I can hear her over in the closet. Yes. Black Bertha is so hungry. Oh, she wants a little piece of meat from you. You know, I would, I, I played my games yeah. with Black and Brown Bertha. So Pat, so I know that there are a ton of people that are totally opposed to spanking because it causes psychological problems, mm -hmm. it makes the child aggressive, it makes them, um, all these, this list of things that, um, that happens. What do you say to those uh, opponents? Well, I disagree. Yeah. Um, you know, my kids have not turned into beastly people yeah. and they're not, you know, they're not out there mm -hmm. causing society great harm because right. I spanked them right. when it was necessary. Absolutely. But what I learned, Clarinda, after a spanking or two, they don't like that. I yeah. mean, they get the message. Yes. And I didn't have to do a whole lot of it. Right. You know, in a few situations I did, yes. but I didn't spend my whole early parenting days, you know, just using Black Bertha, just, just whacking, you know, <laughs> yeah. Black Bertha's presence right. did more good than Black Bertha in action. Yes. And, uh, you know, and I could, I could back them down, you know, if they were stepping out of line. Exactly. But no, no, but believe me, you, you get a kid out there who has not been disciplined properly, yes. well, you've got a menace to society. Absolutely. And, uh, that rear end, you know, <laughs> was designed by God, I think, to absorb absolutely a, a lot of. Now, now, if you're doing otherwise, if you're taking Black Birth and snapping it in their face exactly. and doing mean, yeah. yeah. But that little it's a different issue. That little hind piece, mm -hmm. you know, was designed. It's, it's there to, for a purpose. Yeah, it's there for okay. a purpose, and you know, you apply that discipline right mm -hmm. there. You know, that's that's the deal, and yeah. and then then afterwards. You know, I would always hold these kids in my arms yeah. and say, you have no idea how hard that was for yeah. me. And it was. Right. You know, and, and most of the time, my children would see me troubled or upset. Yes. You know, not in tears, but I would explain to them, boy, I hope I never have to do that yes. again. Yes. Please understand, you've got to play by our rules. And, you know, I just hate having to do that because I love you so much. And, yes. oh, I mean, the kids would then be weeping because I'm... Right. I'm and that's that the, balance of the discipline you know, plus the love. Discipline and love. You've got to, you've got to get that under control. Absolutely. And have that in, e in a nice equal balance. Mm -hmm. I think it's a little bit different with each kid. But yes. 
discipline and love balance. And then we talked about quality and quantity time. Yes. And uh, I, that's people ask me all the time, can you t give me three parenting tips real, real quickly? Yeah, and, please you know, give us yeah, those and three and tips. And I, I start with the importance of quantity time. It, it's got to be there. Number two, discipline and love have to be balanced. And number three, uh, have fun. Mm-hmm. Because that's what they're going to remember. They're going to remember all the fun trips. And to this day, I mean, my kids are in their 30s. They'll reminisce about a trip we took up into the mountains of Pennsylvania, yes. you know, listening to Kenny Rogers, <laughs> you know, playing the gambler or, right. or the Lone Ranger a, a video a record play, yeah, yeah, yeah. on and on. They remember yes. all that stuff. My only regret is I, I, I wish I'd done more of it. More of it, of course. I wish yeah. I'd done more of it. I wish I had created more good times. But we, we, we did our share. Yes. But, uh, but it, it's awfully important, yes. you know, to plant those fun memories. Plant those and, and above early. all, be at their events. Oh yeah. my, you know, they want you there. They want, Dad, are you coming to our game? Or Mom, are you going? But Dad's more important. Oh, you that's think what, so? Yeah, no. <laughs> about being at the games. You're right. It that's is. what I learned. Yes. I mean, mom was fine, but, but dad, you get that come sense our, of validation and approval. Come to our basketball game. Yeah. You're going to be at our swimming meet. They, ne they didn't ask mom that so much. Yeah. But in in my case, you know, it was, the dad was there at the sporting events. Right. Absolutely. And two of my boys were ball boys mm -hmm. with the magic in the early days. Oh my. They have memories, Clorinda, that'll they'll never leave them. I bet so. And those, they were what maybe. 11 and 12, mm -hmm. 13, and running in and out of the locker rooms yeah. and taking care of the referee's mm -hmm. room and taking tickets upstairs for the players before the game to leave them at the will call. And I mean, to this awesome. day, it helped form a foundation for Very their life. Nice. And Pat, I have one last question with you to wrap all of this up. In mm -hmm. regards to uh, discipline strategies, again, we're in a culture where sometimes the kids are being the parent and the parent is being the kid. But how do you, what are your discipline strategies and tips that you would give for our viewers? What do you believe? Well, first of all, you've got to have the rules. The kids yeah. have to know the rules mm -hmm. of the house, uh, whether you have them in writing or whether you just keep reminding them. But they've got to know exactly what the deal is. Yeah. I think that's important. Yeah, I don't think, you know, suddenly they, you spring one on them and then yes. punish them severely. Right. Uh, secondly, um, if they don't get it, you, you've got to make that discipline, I mean, really, really tougher and tougher and tougher. Quick story, we have a, had a, one of our Brazilian sons, sweet kid, nice kid, but boy, was he a hack off in school, a goof off, I mean, and easily led, and, and nothing, nothing would correct him. I mean, we did, it wasn't violent stuff, but mm -hmm. he just disrupted the school. It was a nightmare. And so his junior and senior years, he was grounded, Clorinda, for two full years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he was grounded not to leave the house other than school because yeah. we just couldn't get his attention. Mm. He was a ball boy for the magic. That was gone. He couldn't have friends over. He couldn't go to anybody's house. He couldn't go to a magic game. I mean, we just, just kept adding and adding, and still, it you know, calls from the school. And mm. can you imagine being grounded for no. two full years? <laughs> and, it, and it happened when we didn't let up. Mm. And he's now in California, and you know doing okay mm -hmm. but just a, just that consistency and but following boy, we did we didn't let up we right. did not let up yes because we we couldn't right Absolutely. so so if a kid doesn't get it you you, you just have to keep right. keep the pressure on right. that's all we knew to do right you mentioned earlier about strong-willed children being able to break their will but yet not their spirit yeah yeah that's so important dr. Dobson teaches that strongly You've got to get that will broken where they are defiant yes. or where they um, test you or where they think that they're in charge, yes. where it's all about me. Um, you know, you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win this battle with yeah, you, yeah. Mom. You, 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 you can't let them win. Yeah. And so you've got to break that will of theirs, and, uh, but not their spirit. That's right. the key. Yes. Because that, you, you want them spirited. You want them enthusiastic. You want them energetic. You want them excited about life. Yes. But, but they have to know that they're not running the show right yeah. now, that, that mom and dad are in charge and I'm submissive to their will yes. and to, my, to the teachers at school. I'm, I don't have any right to ter turn their classroom into a terror zone. <laughs> and my coach, yeah. you know, in, in youth soccer or whatever, I'm not running this program. He is. Yeah. And I'm going to bend to his will. Yes. 
Well, you get a kid out there, Clarinda, and I've seen them whose will is not broken. Whew, what a nightmare. Yeah. What a nightmare. And then when they get up into the teen years, yes. boy, that's when you've got major, major problems. Absolutely. So that will must be broken. But, but, but that spirit, boy, there's yeah. nothing like a excited, enthusiastic kid, yes. you know, about good things, yes. but who plays within the rules of society and life. And, yes. But that's a sweetheart of a kid. Yeah. Boy, then you feel really, really good as a parent. Absolutely. So that, that, that really, I think, is the goal. Thank you. Well, Pat, I just want to say thank you very mm, much. Mm. I'm so grateful that you took time out of your, your busy schedule to come here mm -hmm. to Parenting to Win. I know that um, our viewers are going to be so blessed uh, to be able to glean so many tips and advice from you. Before we leave, if you can give our viewers, if they want to learn how they can find any of your books or mm -hmm. information, just what your schedule is going to be at, can you tell our viewers where we can, they can find yeah, you? Yeah, you know, I'd be happy to, Clorinda. We have a website. It's just patwilliams.com patwilliams.com and I'm always very pleased when people go visit that website uh, to check out my latest books and what's going on in my life and uh, you'll find recommendations I make on other books and motivational quotes and all so feel free to visit that website and then I have a Twitter page it's simply Orma Orlando Magic Pat Orlando Magic Pat and send me a tweet or a Twitter or whatever it is and I'll <laughs> I'll respond to that as well. And again, my latest book is called The Difference You Make, uh, Change Your World Through the Impact of Your Influence. It's in bookstores now in the self-improvement section, and you can always go up on Amazon.com as well, a wonderful way to order books. So that's, uh, that's where I am these days, and look forward to hearing from you. Until next time, I'm Clarinda McGrady reminding you that raising your child to be a champion makes you a winner every time. <laughs>